talking about exponential equations. So we've seen linear equations, quadratics, and whatnot. So now when we're looking at exponential equations, what really stands out the most is that now you have a variable as an exponent, which is something that we've never seen before. So uh, we're going to quickly look at what the solution means graphically, but mostly we're going to be uh, solving these exponential equations by algebra. So Alright, so here's our first problem, going with exponential equations. 2 raised to the power of x equals 8. We know it's exponential because you got a variable in the exponent. Now we're going to be mainly solving these exponential equations uh, with algebra techniques. But let's just go ahead and move on to the projector really quick to see what this thing looks like uh, graphically. So we can talk about the solutions to uh, exponential equations by just looking at a graph. Alright, so we just looked at that uh, equation, 2 raised to the power of x equals 8. You know what that equation really was saying is, uh, you know, 2 raised to what power is going to give me that 8, was that, which is actually a y value, right? So it's pretty much saying at what x value are we going to have a y value of 8. Okay, so we come over here, uh, I've plotted out, uh, you know, if we were to plot out 2 to the x against some y values or whatever, this is what it would generate, uh, an exponential curve. So in red, we have 2 to the x graphed out, and you know, uh, 8, y equals 8, we would just expect that to be a horizontal line. So here in blue, we have the horizontal line y equals 8. Notice the intersection point right here is going to have a y value of 8, because that's just, you know, all the way through. But it happens to be at an x value of 3. So graphically, we, we, already, we already seeked out the solution is 3 because we noticed that it has a, that uh, equation. We have an, a value of 8 when uh, x is 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the first example. Let's focus on the types where we get both sides of the equations to a same base. So here, I can't really do anything with the left side of the equation. So let's uh, try to rewrite 8 in a way where it has a base of 2 and also I notice this, an, this is an exponential equation because we have a variable as an exponent so we have 2 to the x I haven't done anything with that but I can rewrite this as having a base of 2 because I'm trying to get both sides of the equations to have the same base and the exponent would be 3 now 2 cubed is equivalent to 8 so I'm allowed to do that now what this is trying to tell me with the equal sign in between them is that when I have the same base, their exponents have to be the same. So once I have a common base, my new equation is their exponents now. So we just pull out the exponents, which is x, and the exponent on this guy is 3. So in this case, we already got what our answer is, which is x is equal to 3. And that makes sense because what this is really saying is 2 to the what power is equal to 8, and that happens to be 3. Okay, so why don't you guys go ahead and give this a shot. It's pretty similar to the one I did. Try to get a common base so we don't have to take the logs of both sides. Okay, so I'm going to try to write this 27 in a way where it has a base of 3. So I'm trying to get a common base. And 3 to the second power would be 27. Nope, that would be 9. So 3 to the third power would be 27. Okay, so now that we have a common base, we know that we're just going to pull out the exponents and work with that as our new equation. So we get that x is equal to 3. So very uh, similar to the one we just tried. So we're going to try some more. Alrighty, so this is our third example. For the other two that we did, um, our uh, term with the variable as the exponent, it was always isolated. Like we had 2 to the x equals 8 and 3 to the x e equals 27. Here, notice our term with the variable as the exponent is not isolated. So when it's not, your first step is just to go ahead and isolate it first before we get it to a common base. So here, I'm just going to go ahead and isolate it by adding 3 to both sides. So then I get that 5 to the x is equal to 125. So now that it's isolated, we're going to go ahead and try to get this 125 to have a base of 5. Okay, 5 to the third power would equal 125, that's equivalent. So now that we have a common base, we just pull out the exponent. So our answer we get is x equals 3, and that would be it. Okay, so just moving right along. 
Uh, we just want to see if our term with the variable as the exponent is isolated or not. That's our first step. And our second step is just to go ahead and see if we can get it to both sides of the equation to the same base. So right here, here's the term with the variable as the exponent. It's already isolated. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to write this 64 as having a base of 4. Try to get it to the same base. So 4 to the power of 3x plus 2 is equal to... Same base, 4 to the third power is 64. So now that I have the same base, I'm going to pull out the exponents as, in, as the new equation. So 3x plus 2 here, 3 here. Now we're just going to solve for the variable, right? So just solving this is just a linear equation. Subtract 2 on both sides. You get that 3x is equal to 1. And then if you divide the 3 over, you get that x is equal to a third. So that happens to be the solution to this exponential equation, x equals a third. Alrighty, so why don't you give this a shot, and then we'll go over it together. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, I notice it's exponential because we have a variable as an exponent. Then we just want to get the term with, which has the variable as the exponent isolated. Then I want to just go ahead and get it to the same base. So I want to go ahead and isolate this term right here because it's carrying the variable. So subtract 4 on both sides. So then we get that 5 to the power of 4x plus 3 is equal to 125. Try to go ahead and get this 125 to a common base here. So 5, and then 5 to what power is 125? That's 3. So now that I have the same base, I'm going to pull the exponents out as the new equation. So 4x plus 3 coming from the left and 3 coming from the right. Now I just solve for that variable. So subtract 3. We get that 4x is equal to 0. And then we get that x is equal to 0 by dividing the 4 over. So Alright, so this uh, exponential equation, I know that because we have variables as the exponent. Now, we have both sides of the equation having a variable as an exponent. It's, it's the first time we've seen that. So, I see a base of 2 here. So, I'm, when I'm just looking at 16, I want to see if I could get it to, to have a base of 2. So, let's see. So, we got 2 to the power of 3x plus 5 is equal to... I want to rewrite this 16. 16 is raised to the power of x. Okay, and I want to get the 16 to have a base of 2. Now, 2 to what power would give me 16? That's 4, right? So me writing this 2 to the 4th power inside this parenthesis, as opposed to this 16 here, is no different because they're equivalent. Okay? Now, if you remember back from the exponent laws, because here we have exponents, what do you do with the exponents when it's in this kind of format? You multiply them, right? You're going to multiply these? So then we get that 2 to the 3x plus 5 is equal to 2. Now I just get one exponent. When it's in this format, you multiply them. It's a power to a power. <clears throat> okay, so now I have the same base. I'm just going to pull up the exponents as my new equation. So from here, I'm going to pull out the 3x plus 5. And from here, I'm going to pull out the 4x. Okay? So just solving for the variable x, now I'm going to get all the variables on one side and all the numbers on the other. So if I just subtract 3x, I get that 5. Because I... That's gone. 5 is equal to 4x minus 3x is just x. So I get that my solution is that x is equal to 5. That would satisfy this exponential equation. Okay, so this is the last problem that I want you to try, where we try to get both sides of the equation to a common base. Alrighty, so this is an exponential equation because we have variables in the exponent where they usually aren't. And then... Both sides of the equation are carrying an exponent as a variable. I'm just talking too much again, sorry. 
Um, so I'm going to try to go ahead and see if this 81 could be rewritten in a way that it has a base of 3. <coughs> My goal is to get both sides of the equation to have a common base right now. So 3 to the power of 4 is 81. And that was all raised to the power of x. And then we already looked at this. This was the power to a power exponent law. So th this gets multiplied in. So we get 3x squared is equal to 3 times 4 to the x. Same base. Uh, pull out the exponents as the new equation. From here we get x squared. From here we get 4x. Now we have a second degree. We know that's quadratic. I'm going to just try to see if this factors. That's the fastest way to solve the quadratic. So subtract the 4x, get a 0 on one side. So we get that x squared minus 4x is equal to 0. Now I'm going to factor out an x. Okay, 0 factor property going on here. So we know that x is equal to 0. Or x is equal to 4. I'm sorry, x minus 4 is equal to 0, okay, running out of room. So I've, I already got one solution here, x equals 0. Here if I add over the 4, I'll get another solution, so x equals 4. Okay, so we got the solutions to this exponential equation to be x equals 0 and x equals 4. And also remember we rewrote this like uh, in a way to look like this where we have uh, the same base. Okay, so let's plug in x equals 0, we get 3 to the 0 squared equals 3 times 4, and I'm going to replace the x with a 0, multiplication there. So this will be 0 squared is 0, 4 times 0 is 0, so we get the same base and the same exponent, right? This is just verifying that these are the uh, same thing, but we know anything to the 0 power is 1. So you get 1 equals 1, which is a true statement. So this solution checks off. So let's try the 4 case now. x equals 4, so then we get 3 to the 4 squared equals 3 times 4 times 4. So this will be 3 to the 16 power equals 3 to the 16 power. Okay, I cannot compute that myself. But just uh, notice that it's the same exact thing on both sides of the equation. So that's just verifying it right there. So then x equals 4 also checks out.